What do you think about liberation theology? It's a contradiction in terms. <laughs> what about the... The, emanci the, the emancipation of the human personality, the human mind, is from theology. There are no two ways about it. I don't care if I run into some priest in Colombia who thinks that Fidel Castro should be Pope. It bores me. It irritates me. I ask him the same question. Is there anything you're saying that an atheist couldn't say that might be right or might be wrong but would still be said? What's the theological bit for? No, Jesus doesn't have a special privilege for the poor. He says, render unto Caesar. Don't you believe that? If not, why go on as if you did? No, it's piffle. It's callow piffle. You've been waiting a lot longer than I have, so go ahead. Well. Toujours la politesse. You've, you've described many deeds of uh, a number of different evil gods. And I notice from the title of your book that God is in very small type. And it is not capitalized, nor is it plural. I'm worrying, wondering, uh, which god do you refer to? Well, the, um, the joke is partly on me, as you point out, in that, uh, but though I didn't say that God had committed any crimes. I wouldn't fall into that mistake. You see, by taking the atheist and anti-theist position, one avoids the dumb questioning that the faithful bring upon themselves. Why does God allow this suffering? I don't have time to waste on a question like that. Um, why was my buddy hit in the testicles and I escaped. <laughs> How did God allow that? God was not involved in it. Why do some people get swept away by the tsunami and others not? Because we live on a cooling planet, baby, with a turbulent weather system which has volcanoes and earthquakes. That's what decides what happens. It's, it, it, we, you can just spare yourself all this stuff if you don't quarrel with God and if you don't uh, try and indict him in this way. So I don't think he's ever committed a single crime or ever will. But that, but that he makes people behave worse, the belief in him does, I mean to say, I have no doubt. In other words, um, I didn't say enough about this perhaps at the beginning. It's not just that our ethics come from our own innate solidarity and decency. It's that morally normal people can be brought to do things that no morally normal person will do or would do, such as mutilating the genitals of a child, for example. I'm sure some people here have been handed a newborn baby in their time. Okay. What, none of you? <laughs> what have you been doing with yourselves? <laughs> no one here has had a newborn baby. Well, I recommend you go home and try harder. <laughs> well, I have. And if you're ever going to have that feeling, oh, maybe this is a miracle. If you're ever going to have it in your life, that's probably where it will be. Little indentations where the fingernails are going to be. It's heartbreaking, really. If only you knew what was coming, but anyway, uh, it's a moment. So you get given this bundle, you think, well, okay, that's great, and, and it probably is a gift from heaven, but I'd better find a sharp stone as quickly as I can and start sawing away at its genitalia, because <laughs> otherwise it wouldn't be pleasing to God. No, no one, no moral person, is, or, and then when he gets old enough to listen, tell him that he's going to burn forever in hell if he doesn't obey some cranky instructions. Poison his life and his dreams. No, no, no. This is not moral preaching. Um, so I'm... Uh, I'm sorry, I, want, I did want to add that before I, um, uh, before I wrapped up. Uh, that it's, it's, it's the... Professor Steven Weinberg puts it very well, actually. He says, in a morally ordinary universe, the good people, decent people, would do the best they can to do right by their fellows. And the psychopaths and the sociopaths, those for whom society and other people don't really count, no, 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 will do wicked things. But if you want good people to do evil things, you need them to be religious. Weinberg is right. So what, so what you're saying is... Uh, Another unsatisfied customer. <laughs> yes. So what you're saying... Uh, Whatsoever is good and kind and just, against such there is no law. 
you, you'll have to have another whack at that, I'm sorry. So what you're saying is, is that whatsoever is good and yes. kind and just, against that there is no law. Whatsoever is good, well I think I'm recognizing an epistle from St. Paul here. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are noble, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, think on these things. Yes, I read that at my father's funeral, as a matter of fact, in the D-Day Chapel in Portsmouth, where Eisenhower had prayed for good weather for the invasion of, of Normandy. What if the weather had been bad? What if heaven had been indifferent in that moment? Don't ask. These things happen. If, if there'd been a divine intervention, we wouldn't have had Nazism in the first place. Um, no, the, I don't really understand the grammar of your question. What I'm saying is there is no law against goodness, and apparently that's what you have been describing to us. I appeal, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> of the jury. I mean, have I been saying that there is no law against goodness or that there is one? Hmm? Well, you're in good company. Thank, I mean, thank you for trying, and if I've seemed obtuse, um, you'll... you'll you're quite welcome to blame me. Hi, uh, my name is Tyler. I hope I'm not the only former Christian from Yakima. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, much like the South, Yakima is. Um, uh, two quick questions. One, I read, I read the review of your book from your brother, and I just want to know, I'm curious about your relationship with him. I, that's as far as I know, as that he didn't like the book. Uh, and secondly, um, some recommendations from you, more of um, influential anti-theists coming up besides Harris, Dennett, Dawkins, and uh, others. So, okay. um, Well, concerning my, my brother Peter, who is a, um, a very distinguished uh, ultra-conservative columnist and, and broadcaster in Great Britain, and a very strongly believing Christian. Um, all I can say is there's probably one in every family. <clears throat> As to the ranks of anti-theism, the, the best book, I, you mentioned Professors Dennett and Dawkins, who of course are great scientists and great explicators of science, a great educator, and Sam, who we've, I've already talked about, and we're beginning to be, it's very, very flattering to me, mentioned in the same breath as the, some say musketeers, I would prefer, I think, horsemen of the counter-apocalypse. Um, <laughs> but there is another one. Well, there are two on the bestseller list now. One is the woman who I had as my witness and friend at the Jefferson Memorial, Ayan Hershey Ali. Some of you will know her. Unbelievably courageous, beautiful woman who has survived with great humor and, and dignity and courage, everything from forced marriage to genital, not just mutilation, but infibulation too. Every, and, every, and, and who thinks that she's probably the only girl born that day in that hospital in Somalia who's still alive, and probably is, but who's now a wanted person uh, on the run, seeking political asylum in the United States. Not even Holland is safe enough to hold her from the fury of people who, to whom her existence is an incitement to murder. And not just murder is on their mind either, if you want my opinion. People who are obscene and filthy, as well as uh, murderous and lethal, and so entitled, so sure of their entitlement to murder because they have God on their side. Well, she was the one who stood next to me at the ceremony, and her book, Infidel, is a marvelous book, as is The Caged Virgin, its previous.